So three hours a day cold calling expired. You got your process dialed in there. So let's look at the next opportunity. Um, I'm assuming building an audience and building your own authority as somebody who can speak on investing in financial security, financial freedom, financial independence, and starting to build your own network and community. Is that sort of an avenue that you'd like to approach? Absolutely, which is why I'm on your podcast now. Okay. So you made my job really easy then. We know exactly what we're trying to accomplish. I don't, I don't have to dig for the opportunity. We know exactly what we're trying to accomplish, which is building your own authority in a very specific space. Okay. So I'm actually going to follow basically step-by-step step the scale engine framework for the first part of brand and then for a little part of scale, which is the first step and then the third step. So brand is identity, messaging, and marketing. And a lot of the time people think branding is basically just a website and a logo. And it's the first part of branding, but it's like probably the most insignificant. Absolutely. Messaging is where it really, really becomes awesome because so many people are trying to promote everything to everyone and it doesn't work like that. So let's dig into the individual that you're trying to attract by being this authority. Talk to me a little bit about the ideal client that you'd like to bring in. You know, my ideal client would be somebody that kind of matches me in personality. You know, I don't enjoy sending. I've noticed in my market with people that say they're investor friendly, you know, they pick these investors and they send them every detail without knowing what the numbers are, without even recognizing if it's a good deal or not. So ideally, I appreciate people that are very upfront in what they want, very decisive, quick to move. Like when you see that something is a good deal, you're ready to jump on it. And, you know, being able to have that kind of trust is important because you need to trust me to send you things that will work for you. And I need to trust that you're going to follow through and not waste my time along with yours. Okay. So let's, give this person an operative name. Let's like, let's create a fictitious character. And it could be someone that you know, but give this individual a name. Well, let's just go with John. <laughs> John, okay. That's really creative. <laughs> That's my um, graphic name. <laughs> Not creative at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so John is detail-oriented. He's very upfront, honest, he's decisive. He wants to trust you. You want to trust him. No BS between you guys. Not into wasting anyone's time. That's perfect. So approximately how old is John? Um, let's go with 30. Okay. Does he own his own home? I would hope so at this point. Okay. So he's looking to kind of buy at least his second property. Yes. Okay. Um, why does he want to start investing? Um, that's a great question. I would something along the lines of freeing yourself up from being forced into a job that you don't want, chasing a paycheck, you know, the opportunities and the freedoms that ownership brings. Right. Uh, does he have a family? Yeah, why not? Kids? Yes. How many kids? Two. <laughs> Two kids. Do they come into the, is it like when you're talking about his why? Right. You mentioned about having financial freedom, that kind of fallback where he's building his own net worth. Um, does his family kind of come into that as well? Yes, it would. So wants to kind of secure their financial future. Let's talk about I'm going to get pretty random right now and then I'll bring it in afterwards. Let's talk about on an average Sunday afternoon. What is John doing? Let's see. Um, I don't know. Quality time with the family, sprinkle in a little bit of work, looking at what changes in the market are happening um maybe driving by or not necessarily focus on work but in the back of his mind you know it's always there when you're running to the grocery store and you see an open house maybe he turns off to stop or you know you're driving somewhere else and you're taking notes of the homes that are available for you just a mental note that you can go back and look into not somebody that's solely focused on eating and breathing real estate, but, you know, realizes that opportunities are out there and just a mental note to check back in. Okay, perfect. So professionally speaking, what does he do? I haven't put much thought into that. I don't know. Probably some other sorts of investments, maybe sales. Like sales or like finances, maybe like he, he's kind of a white collar. Uh, like advisory maybe financial advising let me explain to you why i'm asking these questions 
right? It might seem a little bit random. In order to get the attention of John, we need to meet John where he's at. When John's at work, we're, we're competing with too much to get his attention. Right. So John, so let's say he's a financial advisor. He's working with clients. He's doing this. He's, we can't get him then. Question is, where can we get him and when can we get him? We can get him on a Sunday afternoon. When are we able to get him in the times in between quality time with his family? What type of information is he looking for? He is looking for real estate investing, but he's also because family is very important to him. That's also something that he is looking for information on. So like, let's say hypothetically, a great new restaurant that has awesome reviews in the area that he could take his family to that everybody would love. Like he might, I'm not saying that this is what you should do, but just to understand that's something he might be interested in because obviously looking at John, I'm not going to write a report about a, an awesome, sweet, new trendy spot in the city. Like, I don't know, maybe you would, but to understand the type of information that he's interested in and what I'm looking at this right now, and I'm seeing his why is family. And so when you're talking about things, right? Like you mentioned, when you were doing your expired cold calling, you're not just talking about what's important to you. You're recognizing what's important to them. How do you know what's important to them? You ask them. Very simple. Are you looking to move closer to your kids? Like, why is it that you were even selling? That's basically what we're doing here. So marketing is basically just about getting into the conversation that they're already having in their heads. So John is always thinking, how do I start building my own portfolio, securing my own financial future for the sake of my family? And so when you're, for example, writing a report or writing five creative ways of securing your financial future, you can either write five ways to make more money, or you can say five ways to guarantee your, your family's financial freedom for generations to come. That resonates more with them.